Good. It'll be next year before there are results, but Colin thinks, if adopted, it will open new horizons for patients. With Kelly Paduano, BBC One Today, in Coventry. To sport, and it's been a busy day in football's transfer market, with Aston Villa breaking their club record by signing the Brentford striker Ollie Watkins for £28 million. Watkins was the joint leading scorer in the Championship last season with 26 goals. And West Bromwich Albion have signed the Sheffield United forward Callum Robinson permanently. He was on loan at the club last year. And Stoke City have brought in the Barnsley winger Jacob Brown for an undisclosed fee. Gloucester and Wasps are both in action right now in Rugby Union's Premiership. Gloucester trailed by 28 points uh, to 8 at Exeter. Wasps are 33-7 up at home to Leicester. And later this evening, Worcester are at Bath looking for only their second win in 12 matches. We'll have the result in our late bulletin at half past 10. Farmers in the Midlands have been celebrating the best of British produce today. The annual event organised by the Warwickshire-based National Farmers Union is designed to raise the profile of British farming and the food it produces. We sent our Rural Affairs correspondent, David Gregory Kumar, to a classic Midlands mixed farm in Warwickshire to find out a little more. This is the dairy farm just north of Meriden in Warwickshire. But despite the name, they actually farm arable sheep and beef here, over a thousand acres. And that's pretty typical for this part of the Midlands. We run about 330 breeding ewes, um, or most of our land goes directly to an abattoir or the local market. A lot of it will be exported. Um, it's 100% grass fed, the lamb is. Our lamb and sheep is internationally recognised as an amazing product, so it's not surprising so much is exported. It's a real success story, and right now, prices are good. But what does the future hold? As farmers, I don't think there's too much that we here can do to plan ahead, because really we have no idea what's going to happen next. The best thing we can do is manage the risks. So one of the things farmers have to start thinking about now is going to be the impact of Brexit. Now we've left the European Union. It might seem odd that a lot of the finer details to do with agriculture still has to be sorted out. We're really going right up to the wire. But perhaps that's not a total surprise. This is a very challenging time. And agriculture is always the last chapter in trade deals to be agreed. It is a very, very difficult area. So we've been talking to the government for a long time now about the need to maintain our high standards here, the need to make sure that imports imported into this country are produced to the same standard. Today is about reminding all of us, from shoppers to MPs, about the value and success of the farms that surround us. And in a time of Covid, good local produce seems to have come into its own. It was really great to see such a demand for local produce. People seem to be really utilising farm shops, local smaller farm businesses. Um, we sell lamb boxes and so lamb meat boxes directly to consumers locally and the um, the demand for that really increased, which was, it's been amazing. But for now, a chance for the farms of the Midlands to bask in the sun and consider a job well done in a difficult year. Something to crow about. <coughs> David Gregory Kumar, BBC Midlands Today, Meriden in Warwickshire. We're going to stay with the outdoors now and a band of friends who originally bonded over football. The Stoke City Old Boys are a group of former players who included the late, great Gordon Banks. They're